Hi, welcome to CEO Meets. My name's Pip Wilkins. I'm the Chief Executive at the British Franchise Association. That was a mouthful. And I'm really pleased today to be joined by Kieran Harkin from Dispute Assist. Hey, Kieran, how are you doing? I'm very well, Pip. How are you? Yeah, not so bad. So, first and foremost, talk to us about what you do and what your role in the company is. What does Dispute Assist do to the naked eye so that people understand? Yes, I guess it's a very non-glamorous world. What we do is a bit of a dark world, not a lot of people know about, but effectively we are at the back end of things when things go wrong for lots of different types of organizations. So normally that is a complaint has come in. The complaint hasn't quite gone the way people wanted it to go. People meet sort of hit deadlock. Uh, and then we step in to effectively resolve what then becomes a dispute between two parties. Uh, and my role is I'm managing director, uh, so I'm running the company on the day-to-day -day basis, and we also offer other similar services, which is all around fixing things when they go wrong. Well, we like a fixer in franchising, so talk to us about the services that you can provide to the franchise community specifically. Yeah, so I, I guess in the simplest way to say it, we, we help with complaints, disputes, and claims. Uh, that's, that's the easy way of saying it. Um, and I guess from a complaints point of view, you know, we can, for, for a lot of organizations, we'll either do some complaints for them, you know, when they get a, a sort of surge in complaints, or we'll do all of their complaints because it's what we do every day. And um, the thing that we're famous for and what the name is really talks about is dispute resolution. And we're a, an approved uh, ADR, provide alternative dispute resolution provider under the Chartered Trading Standards Institute. There's another mouthful. Um, but that's what we do. And that's when, yeah, two parties have sort of fallen out. And we step in and the ultimate goal is to make sure that they don't go to court because when they go to the court, the house wins. Nobody ever really comes out of that with exactly what they wanted. Uh, and then the final bit that we do, because it's quite similar to disputes, is we help organisations deal with claims. Um, and that could be uh, PPI style claims. Uh, mm -hmm. It could be compensation claims. It could be if you lend finance, uh, your financial products or services to consumers, for example, or other businesses you might get section 75 claim, all this sort of legal jargon but ultimately our whole goal is whatever that issue is whatever bucket it falls into we help companies and their customers resolve them and hopefully avoid anybody having to go to court and so when we're talking disputes in franchising here you're talking the dispute really between the consumer aren't you and the, the franchisee or the franchisor yeah that's right or unless it's b2b as well we'll cover both commercial and what we call commercial and domestic uh, disputes but that's exactly it. There's ultimately, there are two parties who have fallen out at some point. Um, and then that's where we step in really on behalf of both parties. So it's, it is an independent service. Um, and that's what it needs because when people fall out, emotion takes over. Um, and so we sort of come in, clear minds, independent view. Um, first of all, I will say we validate the complaint and dispute. Because unfortunately, we do live in a country where there's an awful lot of frivolous complaints, disputes, and claims as well. Yeah. So half of our job is actually just validating that it should have got into the door, should have got in the door in the first place. Um, so talk to us then client expectations. So somebody comes to you and they say, look, I've fallen out with a, a customer, they weren't happy with the service that I provided. What would you do? How does it all work? And what can they expect you to do for them? Well, I'm hoping this will be a nice change because one thing that allows us to operate at the speed that we do is I think we're one of the few organizations that feels like these days guess what we use the phone so the first thing is they'll get us on the phone mm -hmm. um, and other channels but we like to do things on the phone um, effectively we'll listen to what's actually happened and we'll make contact um, with the consumer if the if business is raising the dispute uh, with the consumer or the other way around if the consumer contacts us we'll uh, obviously uh, speak to the business involved that's actually quite unique because the way the landscape set up around this sort of thing, it's always sort of it leans quite heavily towards the consumer. Consumers are able to raise disputes, yep. but actually I think we're the only organization that allows a business or a franchise to raise a dispute against the consumer because sometimes they've done actually a job that's perfectly okay and a consumer is actually unlawfully holding on to money. Yes. So we also do it that way as well, but effectively, it's quite informal to start with you know in the first week it will be very much picking up the phone to both parties and just talking it through and um, and then depending on how we go with that then we have a range of tools available to us and these tools are all about evidence 
um, whether that's digital triage, where we look at something digitally um, to understand what the problem was. We have yep. independent on-site inspections, expert witnessing, uh, all this sort of good stuff. But the whole idea is to basically use all of that evidence to get to what is the right decision for both parties. Um, and so from a franchising perspective, <clears throat> Um, are you working predominantly with franchisors or franchisees? So at this moment in time, it's actually a bit of a both uh, in the last couple of weeks. Um, we had come across franchisees actually through probably all sorts of avenues because we deal directly with a franchisee. They might come to us to say we need some help with complaints, but also they might be members of associations uh, you know, or certification bodies. And those certification bodies might actually be using our services as well behind the scenes. So it is a bit of a mixture, but more recently, just with the way things are potentially about to change in the dispute resolution landscape, franchisors are now getting interested, uh, making sure that they've sort of dotted the I's and crossed the T's ahead of some potential changes in legislation. So uh, can you share any of those changes, things that are on the horizon that we all need to be aware of? Yeah, I can, and it won't obviously cover all franchisors, but if in effect, um, the regulated markets all have dispute resolution as a given. It's mandatory. So examples of that are telecommunications, energy, uh, financial services, and you'll know people like the financial ombudsman services, uh, you know, people like that. Um, two of the biggest markets in the UK that have the most consumer detriment are unfortunately home improvement and automotive. Every year, citizens advice highlight those two at the top of the league table. And as a result of that, uh, government now are very actively working towards mandating uh, dispute resolution in those sectors. So this will relate to thinking about franchisors or franchisees if you're in the automotive sector. Uh, and when we say the automotive sector, that will pull in servicing as well, as well as sales and those ad hoc services that you might apply uh, to cars, etc. Uh, and then with home improvement, it's effectively any services in relation to the home. So that's yeah. a huge market, but that's why there's so much. So each year, as I say, there's about just over four billion pounds worth of unresolved complaints in that massive home improvement market. And that's why government is wanting to do something about it. So um, there was consultation on it. The results of the consultation have come out. And we can see the government is now with seemingly checking with the Ministry of Justice just to see how the courts are looking at the moment with backlogs, etc. But we can feel that uh, it does look like and feel like that uh, government is pushing for it to be mandatory, certainly within that home improvement sector. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you for the update. Um, I'll be very useful to the franchisors that are in those different sectors. Um, now, I ask the same question of everybody before I finish my CEO meets, um, which is, if you were to give somebody a top tip, if they're looking to come into franchising, what would be your top tip? Coming into franchising? Well, interestingly, to the side, I actually am a franchisee uh, ah, as well. Um, and um, for me, somebody coming into it as a franchisee, it is that back office support, isn't it? You know, because as yeah. a franchisee, when you're starting out, it can get a bit lonely <laughs> as you're looking around you late at night in your home office going, how do I bring in the new business again? And then it's just a case of starting to look around you and looking at the franchise or and reminding yourself of all the tools and resources that have always been there. You might not just ever have used them, uh, but I find that most of the franchisors in the UK have excellent uh, resources and support facilities in place. You've just got to be humble enough to go and ask them for it. Uh, and actually that will normally serve you well. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time today. It's been fab to catch up with you, Kieran. Great. Thanks, Beth.